Hello, everybody, and welcome to another mystery box function challenge. In the purple box, there is some math, and your challenge is to figure out what that is. Because it's Friday, it's going to be particularly challenging. If you'd like to try this out on your own, use the link in the description to do that, and then come on back and see if we get the same thing. All right, I'm going to begin with a zero. Okay, so zero gives us zero. How about a one? Just 0.5, how about a 2? Gives us 0.4. So it was going up, and now it's come back down again, which might make you think trig, except these numbers do not look like trig numbers. Uh, with trigonometric functions, we usually get these non-repeating decimals. How about a 3? Hmm, how about a 4? Oh, interesting. So it looks like we're getting closer and closer to the x-axis here. What if we go all the way out to 10? Yeah, still not quite there to the x-axis. What if we go out to 100? We're not going to see this on the graph, of course. Aha, still not at the x-axis. So it's never crossing over there into that negative territory. Interesting. So that's an asymptote, it looks like, although then it crosses that asymptote at at zero. What does it do on the negative side? Oh, it looks like we might have some symmetry across the origin here. Let's put in a negative two. Aha, uh -huh. and negative three. Right, how about a negative ten? Right, so this on this side, it looks like it's approaching the x-axis um, as, as an asymptote, but from underneath. So what could possibly be doing this? Do you have any idea what even category of function this could be? So I have an inkling. I think it might be a rational function, because those are the functions that we tend to see these asymptotes on. Um, it, the zero maybe threw us off because we didn't get infinity there, so maybe it's not x on the bottom. Um, in fact, maybe it's something on the bottom that could never be zero. So let's think about, about the possibilities. I don't really know what's on top. On the bottom, what could never be zero? It would have to be a positive number, something that you're certain is always going to be a positive number plus a positive number. So hmm, so I'm just uh, throwing some things out here. What if you had x squared and then you added 1 or, so, or some other number? Might might not be 1, might be some other number. If you did that, the, the lowest x squared could be a 0, and then you could add 1 to it to always make it positive. So this would never be 0, what's on the bottom, which, which would fit with the data we've got so far because we don't see any kind of um, place where the function is undefined. And then what could be on the top? Well, hmm. I'm just going to throw in some possibilities and then we'll fool around with this. What if it's just uh, x on the top? What would that do? Well, it, yeah, and the reason I put x on the top is because at 0, we've got 0. So if you put in 0 for x, you make the top 0 and the bottom here is 0 plus 1. So that would equal 0. So that works. What happens if you put 1 in here? Then you'd have 1 over 1 squared plus 1. Ah, so that's... 1 squared plus 1 is 1 squared is 1 plus 1 is 2, so that's 1 over 2, that's 1 half. This is actually looking promising. How about um, 2? So you put 2 over 2 squared plus 1, that's 2 fifths, and that is 0.4. Oh my goodness, I think we've got this. What an interesting shape. Hmm. Well, let's, um, let's maybe try one more point. Let's put in a negative 3 and see what we get here. So that would be negative 3 over negative 3 squared plus 1. Ah, so that'd be 9 plus 1 is 10, so negative 3 tenths. Yep, and that is what we're getting. So I, I think this must be it. Let's go ahead and reveal. And there it is, x over x squared plus 1, and we can graph that. Very interesting shape. So one of the reasons I went to putting x squared on the bottom was figuring out how the function could be rational but never be undefined. But another reason is that the asymptote 
is this line y equals 0. And in a rational function, when you have the asymptote y equals 0, that is the case, well, in several rational functions, but it's always the case when the degree of the function is bigger on the bottom than it is on the top. So that made me think maybe we have a larger degree of x down here than we have on the top. And I just went for the simplest, largest degree we could have. Well, that was kind of a deep dive into some rational functions. How did that go for you? Were you, uh, were you in the ballpark? Let me know. Thanks, everybody.